in this video we will talk about the pelvis or the female pelvis including the description of bones joints ligaments and diameters starting with the description of bones the pelvis is formed by four bones two hip bones also called as the innominate bones one sacrum and one coccyx the hip bones unite anteriorly at a joint called the pubic symphysis or the symphysis pubis they unite posteriorly with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joints the complete ring composed of hip bones pubic symphysis and sacrum forms a deep basin like structure called bony pelvis together these three bones the sacrum and two hip bones form the pelvic girdle which forms the connection between the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton we will talk about these bones one by one first we will talk about the innominate bone there are two innominate bones also called as the hip bones each formed by three parts the ilium the ischium and the pubis the ilium is the largest of three parts of the innominate bone ilium is a large flared out portion of the innominate bone it is composed of a superior ala or wing and an inferior body the superior border of ilium the iliac crest ends anteriorly in a blunt anterior superior iliac spine below this is the anterior inferior iliac spine Posteriorly, the iliac crest ends in a sharp posterior superior iliac spine. Below this is a posterior inferior iliac spine. These spines serve as points of attachment for the tendons of the muscles of trunk, hip, and thighs. Below the posterior inferior iliac spine is the greater sciatic notch, through which the sciatic nerve, the longest nerve in the body, passes. On the posterior aspect of ilium is a roughened area called the iliac tuberosity, which gives attachment to various tendons of the muscles. The large depression on the anteromedial aspect of ilium is called the iliac fossa. This is the articulating surface, which articulates with sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint. The arcuate line of the ilium is a smooth, rounded border on the internal surface of the ilium. It is immediately below to the iliac fossa. The next portion of the innominate bone is the ischium. The ischium forms the inferior posterior portion of the hip bone and is composed of a superior body and an inferior ramus. The ramus is the portion of the ischium that fuses with the pubis. Inferiorly, the ischium has a rough area called the ischial tuberosity. Posteriorly, ischium has a prominent structure known as the ischial spine. Descent of the fetal head during labor is measured in relation to the ischial spine and is called station of fetal head. Together, the ramus and the pubis surround the obturator foramen, which is the largest foramen in the skeleton. The third portion or part of the innominate bone is the pubis. Pubis means pubic bone. It is the anterior and inferior part of the hip bone. A superior ramus, an inferior ramus, and a body between the two rami comprise the pubis. The anterior superior border of the body is the pubic crust, and its lateral end is a projection called the pubic tubercle. This tubercle is the beginning of a raised line, the pectineal line, which extends superiorly and laterally along the superior ramus to merge with the arcuate line of the ilium. The pubic symphysis is the joint between the two pubic bones. It consists of a disc of fibrocartilage. Now the estibulum. The estibulum is a deep fossa formed by the ilium, the ischium and the pubis. It functions as the socket that accepts the rounded head of the femur. Together the estibulum and the femoral head form the hip or the coxal joint. On the inferior side of the estibulum is a deep indentation called the estibular notch that forms a foramen through which the blood vessels and nerves pass and serves as a point of attachment for ligaments of the femur. Posteriorly, the pelvis is formed by the sacrum. The sacrum is a triangular bone formed by the union of five sacral vertebrae, S1 to S5. The female sacrum is shorter, wider and more curved between S2 and S3 than the male sacrum. The narrow inferior portion of the sacrum is known as the apex. The broader, superior portion of the sacrum is called the base. The anteriorly projecting border of the base is called the sacral promontory. The lateral portion of the superior surface of the sacrum contains a smooth surface called as the sacral ala. On both lateral surfaces, the sacrum has a large air-shaped auricular surface that articulates with the ilium of each hip bone to form the sacroiliac joint, which is the strongest joint in the human body. The concave anterior side of the sacrum faces the pelvic cavity. It is smooth and contains four transverse lines or ridges that mark the joining of the sacral vertebral bodies at the ends of these lines are four pairs of anterior sacral foramina 
the convex posterior surface of the sacrum contains a median sacral crust formed by the fusion of spinous processes of upper sacral vertebra, a lateral sacral crust formed by the fusion of transverse processes of sacral vertebra, and four pairs of posterior sacral foramina. These foramina connect with the anterior sacral foramina to allow passage of nerves and blood vessels. The sacral canal is a continuation of the vertebral cavity. The lamina of the fifth sacral vertebra and sometimes the fourth fail to meet. The sleeve is an inferior entrance to the vertebral canal called the sacral hiatus. On either side of the sacral hiatus is a sacral cornua. The next bone inferior to the sacrum is the coccyx. The coccyx, like the sacrum, is triangular in shape. It is formed by the fusion of usually four coccygeal vertebrae, indicated as CO1 to CO4. The dorsal surface of the body of the coccyx contains two long coccygeal cornua that are connected by the ligaments to the sacral cornua. Now we will talk about the pelvic joints. The first is the sacrococcygeal joint. The sacrococcygeal joint is the joint between the fifth sacral and the first coccygeal segments. It allows flexion and extension of the coccyx. However, these movements are rather passive, occurring during childbirth and defecation. The second is the pubic symphysis. It is a secondary cartilaginous joint between the medial surface of the pubic bones. Usually, there are no movements on this joint except in pregnancy when the ligaments and cartilage soften, allowing the increase of pelvic diameters during labor. The third is the sacroiliac joint. It is the strongest joint in the human body. The sacroiliac joint is a synovial joint between the ala of sacrum and the auricular surface of the ilium. This joint allows very little mobility through the slight gliding and rotation movements. In women, the ligaments of the joint soften during pregnancy, enabling the increase of pelvic diameter during childbirth. Now we will discuss about the pelvic ligaments. First, the pubic ligament. There is a superior pubic ligament which is situated on the superior aspect of the symphysis, attaching laterally to the pubic tubercles. The inferior or the arcuate pubic ligament is a thick fibrous band that connects the inferior parts of the joint. The sacrospinous ligaments run from the sacrum to the ischial spine. Anterior sacrococcygeal ligaments connect the coccyx with sacrum anteriorly. Anterior sacroiliac ligament covers the front of the sacroiliac joint. The posterior sacroiliac ligament runs along the back of the sacroiliac joint and provides considerable stability. The ligament connects the back of the hip bones to the sacrum. The sacrotuberous ligament is a thick fibrous band that extends from the posterior ilium, lateral sacrum, and coccyx to the ischial tuberosity. Posterior sacrococcygeal ligaments connect the sacrum and coccyx posteriorly. Now we will discuss about the pelvic diameters. The pelvis is divided anatomically into false pelvis and a true pelvis, the boundary line being the brim of the pelvis. The bony landmarks on the brim of the pelvis from anterior to posterior on each side are symphysis pubis, pubic crest, pubic tubercle, pectineal line, iliopectineal eminence, iliopectineal line, sacroiliac joint, anterior border of sacral ala, and sacral promontory. False pelvis is the portion about the pelvic brim. It has no obstetric significance relevant to the passage of fetus through the pelvis. It is formed by iliac portions of the innominate bones and is limited by iliac crustus. Its only obstetric function is to support the enlarged uterus during pregnancy. Its boundaries are posteriorly lumbar vertebra, laterally iliac fossa, and anteriorly anterior abdominal wall. True pelvis is the pelvis below the pelvic brim. It is divided into inlet, cavity, and outlet. Inlet is the brim of the pelvis, cavity is the segment of the pelvis bounded above by inlet and below by the outlet. Now the diameters of the inlet. The inlet is almost round shaped in female or gynecoid pelvis. The anterior posterior diameter of the inlet is the distance between the midpoint of sacral promontory to inner margin of the upper border of the symphysis pubis. It measures about 11 cm. It is also called as true conjugate, anatomical conjugate or conjugate vera. Obstetric conjugate is the distance between midpoint of sacral promontory to prominent bony projection in midline on the inner surface of the symphysis pubis. It measures about 10 centimeters. 
The diagonal conjugate is the distance between the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the midpoint on the sacral promontory. It measures 12 cm. Only the diagonal conjugate can be measured directly by pelvic assessment in late pregnancy or in labor. The obstetric conjugate is measured by subtracting 1.5 to 2 cm from diagonal conjugate and true conjugate is measured by subtracting 1 cm from diagonal conjugate. Transverse diameter of the inlet is the distance between two farthest points on the pelvic brim over the iliopectineal lines. It measures about 13 cm. There are two oblique diameters of the inlet, the right and the left. Each one extends from one sacroiliac joint to the opposite iliopubic eminence and measures 12 cm. Now the diameters of the cavity. The cavity is almost round shaped. The anterior posterior diameter measures from midpoint on the posterior surface of symphysis pubis to the junction of second and third sacral vertebra. It measures about 12 cm. The other diameters cannot be precisely measured as the points lie over soft tissues. The overall diameter of the cavity is taken to be 12 cm. Now the outlet. It has the obstetric outlet and the anatomical outlet. The obstetric outlet is anterior posteriorly oval shaped. The anterior posterior diameter of obstetric outlet extends from inferior border of symphysis pubis to the tip of sacrum and measures about 11 cm. The transverse diameter also called bispinous diameter, measures between two ischial spines and is 10.5 cm. Now the anatomical outlet. The anterior posterior diameter extends from the lower border of symphysis pubis to the tip of cossex and is 13 cm. The transverse or intertuberous diameter measures between inner borders of ischial tuberosities and is 11 cm. That was all about the pelvis.